Hi, I'm Jeff Teeter. I'm a systems engineer with the America Partners Organization. Today we're going to be looking at Lab 10 of the Cisco Open SDN Controller Hands-On Labs. Specifically, we're going to be looking at working with XSQL on the uh, Open SDN Controller. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So the first thing that we need to do, very similar to our, our Python lab, is we need to go ahead and allow uh, connectivity uh, to take place uh, on the port uh, for, S for XSQL. It uses a different port. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is um, log into uh, the Mininet, I'm sorry, log into the OpenSDN controller. I believe I already have a connection. And we just need to uh, basically uh, modify the IP tables. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at what's available. And, and right now port 8181 is allowed. Uh, but with XSQL we actually need to use a different port. We need to use uh, port 3433. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is um, make a change. We're going to go ahead and um, let me see what directory we're on. Okay. Go ahead and add the actual configuration that we need. Uh, we're going to be a little bit more open on this one. We're just going to go ahead and allow the whole subnet to run these type of commands. Uh, you could be restrictive if you wanted to. Uh, like we were last time, we only allowed uh, port 8181 to come from the Mininet server. This time we're just going to go ahead and allow this port to be communicated from any anybody that's on the direct subnet, which is uh, the 162. Uh, dot 172.16.1.0, uh, which is a class C, so it's a slash 24, uh, with a destination port of uh, 34.34.3. Um, and again, we're going to go ahead and, and save uh, IP tables, and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, list and as you can see now um, uh, at the very last we're now allowing any type of uh, traffic uh, from the 172.16.1.0 to the destination port 34.34.3 so that should go ahead and allow us to do what we want to do now uh, so what we want to do is go ahead and open up a, a telnet session um, but a telnet session on a, a different port using this 34343. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's uh, do putty and open up. Um, go ahead and load where it says SDN controller, but I'm going to change that to Telnet. And I'm going to change that port number to 34343. And then we're going to go ahead and and open the connection and as you can see we have an SQL prompt ready uh, to go for us. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is just kind of uh, take a look around and, and see uh, what tables do we have to choose from. Uh, so these are virtual tables uh, that we can query from. Uh, so we get a list of V tables see um, let me go ahead and see I'll go ahead and change the settings a little bit here look at terminal and we're going to do an implicit uh, CR uh, 
Let's see if we can apply that and do it again. Okay. Let me make the screen a little bit bigger. Okay. So this is basically just giving a list of all the different tables uh, that we can query. So obviously there's just a, a ton of different tables from network topologies uh, to groups to flows uh, that we can pull from. So let's go ahead and, and start just uh, seeing what we can seeing what we can get. Uh, so we're going to select uh, anything uh, from nodes node. Okay. And so here's an example of nodes that are connected and these are happen to be uh, a combination of the five open flow um, switches uh, that we spun up earlier and then also we just recently uh, connected um, routers one and three uh, to the OpenSDN controller and then of course the controller itself so it's it's showing about 11 devices uh, that are currently connected um, including the controller so um, now obviously if you wanted to go ahead and take this information and either print it out or something like that you might want to send it to a file so one of the cool thing that's built into this XSQL capability is the ability to toggle uh, to a file. So you can uh, toggle uh, by just saying to CSV and hit enter and now it's saying that the to CSV file is true. Uh, so in other words output is going to be sent to that file. So let's let's go ahead and, and try something real quick here. Let's do a select star uh, from node slash node. So basically just what we did. And hit enter. And it's exported to this CSV file. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, see if we can find that uh, file. So And we know the name of the file is export dash. And we could search for the whole thing, but there's no reason to. And, oh, you know what we need to do? Um, let me go ahead and tell that that basically got piped to the file which will be an error but anyway let me go ahead and actually open up another telnet session or maybe I already have one open um, yeah open here's another one that we're using IP tables Okay, and it looks like obviously we have two of them because we've, we've sent two things. Uh, the first one is, um, or I should say the 185 is the one that we really want to take a look at. Uh, so we could do a, a cat-opt Cisco uh, controller export and uh, 185. And I'm not for sure how big that is, but... So that one was an error. Let me 
two, four, six. And that was an error also. So let me go ahead and do this real quick. Let's uh, select. Oh, yeah, I had a, had a typo there. Not, not typing select real well. Uh, select star. from nodes node okay and that uh, ended in 1740 so let's go ahead and go back uh, here Okay, so that time I actually typed it correctly and it worked. So that's just an example of uh, how you can go ahead and take the data and actually have it exported uh, to a file, uh, to basically a CSV file, and then obviously you could uh, either TFTP that off or uh, use WinSCP or whatever uh, your method is to get data off of a Linux box. Um, so um, let's go ahead and go back do the X SQL and to basically uh, stop that from occurring uh, to turn that off you basically just uh, do to CSV again uh, type that in and now a CSV file is false um, so let's go ahead and and do a couple other things uh, let's um, Do a couple uh, more complicated things. Let's uh, do a query select from nodes slash node slash node connector. And so this is giving a, a ton of information as far as. Um, uh, the open flow switch interface, uh, MAC address, uh, all of this information is, uh, let me see if I can actually change. Make the font just a little bit smaller. and issue the command again. Okay, so that's a little bit more readable. Um, so you can actually see the port number ID, the current speed, uh, the feature, maximum speed, status, name, uh, what's supported, advertised features, peer features, uh, configuration, and lastly, uh, this is the hardware address or MAC address uh, for each of these. Right. And uh, we could also get more detailed. Um, do a, another select statement here. Select nodes from node ID. So it just kind of depends on how granular you want to get.
Oh, goodness. If I can copy that or not. Okay, and see now with all of that information, we're able to tell uh, what the node is, uh, the node ID, and the hardware or basically the MAC address that's associated with that. So a very clean way. So definitely uh, using this X SQL, uh, especially for people that are really familiar with databases, it's uh, uh, definitely uh, very nice and uh, something that a lot of people would be familiar with. Um, so let me uh, look at doing one other thing here real quick. Oop. Didn't want to do that. That's not what I want to do. Let's see. Let's see if I can do this. I don't need to type it. Here real quick to see. Um, so here, what I basically did was uh, basically issued the same command I did before, but I was actually looking for a hardware address that had FA in it. Um, so this basically picked up out of all those that we printed off um, one that had a, a MAC address of uh, FA. Now of course we could go ahead and it's up here we could go ahead and, and do uh, something uh, totally different so we could look for one that has like uh, O that's ending in uh, O let's look at O2 or D2 here Okay, and so it picked up um, one record uh, that had the D2, and it's exactly the one that we were looking at before. So it's just another way to basically access information. Obviously, you could write scripts to do this. You could have a, a Python programming program where if, uh, for example, someone wanted to easily find the, the MAC address of you know, a particular interface or whatever, or want to do some type of search, you could write an easy Python program to be able to do that and work specifically with XSQL um, to get all the information that the OpenSDN controller has access to. So a very cool uh, appli application capability that you can use uh, on the OpenSDN controller. And this completes uh, the hands-on labs for the OpenSDN controller uh, lab that we presented at Cisco Live, and I hope you uh, enjoyed working through these labs.